Hi, my name is David. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. I'm starting a channel, uh, kind of beginning going over men's fashion, recent pickups that I get, pieces that I've collected, some advice, guys, on how to get these, like acquire certain pieces, get stuff to fit you the way you want it to, because a lot of struggles in being a big dude like me and trying to find shit, especially in the designer world, that fits you the way you want it to. So I wanted to start my first video off by showing some of my favorite pieces that I've owned over the years and kind of give you guys an idea of the pieces I'm into, designers I'm into. I don't want these few pieces that I show to make you think that this is, oh my god, this guy's rich, he's got some... I've got all these pieces for ridiculously good prices and I don't just wear designer wear, but it just so happens that my favorite pieces that I've ever owned happen to be some of my favorite designers of all time. So to get into it, I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to start with the raft. Go, go straight into it, right? Why not? So uh, this is the first piece of RAF clothing I ever owned. First thing I ever owned by RAF was a pair of Astronaut Highs, which are like his main line shoes. They were like a metallic blue with the straps, had like the fucking weed pouch on the back. They were pretty tight. But uh, this is from Spring Summer 2006. It's got the Flux Ethereum print on the front in red, uh, which I'm pretty sure, if I remember looking up a while ago, it means like to ascend to the stars. Um, but the cotton is extremely soft, and I think what makes this piece, I think, one of the rarest wrap pieces you can find, and I know a lot of people be like, oh, the, but size-wise, to find a piece that could fit someone who's either an XL or a double XL, and to fit over size and wrap is probably one of the hardest finds I think you can get, in my opinion, because I know, because I've been trying for three, four years, and this was my first success, and my only success. I had one piece that I sold a while ago that kind of fit me, but it wasn't just wasn't right. If I if I held on to it, it probably probably would have been smart. But this right here, I'll never see it again. I've never seen it again, even in a smaller size. Um, but I, I just I find it hard to believe that I found it. It took so long. The only other piece that I ever was even close to getting that I knew would have fit me, I think it was spring summer two thousand three. It's like a cream colored, and it's got like the two girls on the front. I'm pretty sure. Um, I saw it on Grailed for like 500 I think it just sold, but I was bidding until the last day, I was at like 500 or $300, and I ended up selling for like 600 so I was, that's way out of my price range, I could never spend that much on a t-shirt, no matter how much I love Raph, but, this is it, spring, summer, 2006, yeah. Well, since we got the Raph, I'll, I'll, I'll go into probably the rarest piece, by far the rarest piece that I own. Um... Raph Simmons, Autumn Winter, 0405, Poltergeist, long sleeve v-neck. I got the half Poltergeist in the front, and half Poltergeist in the back. What makes this so rare is that I still have I still have the tags on it. I don't know how I bought it from off Grail a few years ago, back when Grail first started, from a guy from Belgium, and he sold it to me. I think he had it only up for 120 dollars. I ended up buying it for 80. I've had people offer me three, four hundred dollars for this when I turn it down every time because I'm not going to get rid of it. This is like, this is the epitome of if you're a collector, this would be one of those pieces that you would be find hard to believe that you own and have in your possession, especially in the size I have it. Size 54. So I was praying when I bought it from the guy, I asked him, like, you know, I'm an XL, 2XL sometimes, and a 54 is a European 2XL. Um, and he's like, you know what, to be honest, I recommend you just stay buying American clothes. And I'm like, okay. Well, fuck you. It's kind of a dick thing to say, but I bought it anyways. And he was totally right. It fits like a medium or a large, but... You know, I have plans. I wanted to do something with this, so I'm not going to get rid of it yet, but... Probably the rarest piece I own. Don't really see any old raft like this with tags on it, so... Very rare. Alright, now to go into some of the more basic, but another from one of my favorite designers. I just sound so basic starting with Raph and Rick, but that's the order it's in in my closet. So, uh, this is Rick Owens' main line, Spring Summer 2014 Vicious. Uh, I bought this off an Essence sale like two years ago. It would make sense, Spring Summer 14. Uh, I think I got it for around 200 which at the time and still now, $200 is a lot of fucking money. I don't care what anyone says, especially for a t shirt. But, uh, the thing I love about Essence.com, and I've been telling everybody I know this since the day I started shopping there, is they show your sizes. You can really see every measurement from armpit to armpit, length, sleeve. You get every measurement. So this is a size medium. Obviously, I'm not a size medium, but this fits oversized. 
And, you know, I've been on websites where they're like, oh, it's oversized fit. Like, what the fuck does that mean? What does oversized fit mean? Is it like three sizes oversized? Is it barely oversized? Got the measurements right. Fits me perfectly. Raglan cut. Definitely still a little bit tight across the shoulders, but that's just how Rick fits in general. That's not just for me. So, one of my favorite pieces that I own. Very simple, very plain, but never going to get rid of this one. Next, we'll, we'll go overseas, right? So I got one of my favorite designers, if not my favorite designer. Very, very slept on, very, very underrated, I feel like. Doesn't get talked about a lot. Uh, Jun Jae, he's a Korean designer. What I love most about him is just the designs on his t-shirts. They're unbelievable. The prints, they're like stickers. It's like a fucking movie. This shit's ridiculous. Like this, got the silver bird on it. The print goes all the way. If you could see the whole thing, hopefully. You got the skyline at the bottom. That extends around to the back. Uh, this is another piece that's oversized. Another piece that I got off of Essence Sale. But I just always loved Jin Jay. And what I loved about him most was his outerwear. When I started watching his collections a few years ago. Well, to me, it's too expensive. I mean, I've gotten close on some sales, but it's still pretty expensive. But I would definitely look into that. Because I think his bombers can rival anybody. Helmet, Raph. He really is an amazing designer. And he's one of my favorite pieces. But I'll give you an example of how that sticker design looks. This is another piece I got a couple years ago. Um, the print is, if you could tell at all, it's like it's like a sticker. But I I mean I know I know some stuff. I have no idea how they get this print. Um, but to me it gives off the clearest images I've seen, the best color I've seen on a graphic print. And it can't really fade. You just gotta be careful. I I get it dry cleaned. I don't trust myself or almost anybody else with these pieces because I always feel like this is going to fade away or peel off so but Jin Jay, one of my favorite designers um, yeah. this is actually a pretty recent pickup and if I do a video on recent pickups this actually will probably be in it but this is Walter Van Buren Donk uh, if you don't know Walter Van Buren Donk he was probably one of the main reasons why Raph Simmons ever just started designing clothes because Raph studied furniture uh, at the Royal Academy for Design in, in Belgium. Could be wrong on that. But um, he met Walter. He started interning for Walter. Um, and I think that's where he kind of found his spark because Walter's a crazy, he's a crazy dude. He's very wild, very out there. It's very funny because I feel like to a certain degree they're very different. But uh, I'm pretty sure he's the person who ended up bringing Raph to that Margiela show. Was it 1991? That ended up kind of making Raph want to design. So a true piece of history here. And history in his own right, not just for what he did for Raph, but awesome piece, all over print uh, on the sleeve. Should remember by now, but I think it says "Cross the Crocodile Growl," so don't go near the crocodile. But really, really soft cotton. Uh, I think I got this on eBay for about seventy bucks, which isn't bad because I don't really find too many of his pieces in my size. I find plenty on eBay in like really small sizes, but for great prices, awesome pieces that you'll probably never see again. So. That's Walter. All right. Uh, one of my favorites right here. Don't wear it as much as I'd like to, and I don't know why. It's just too humid here in Chicago sometimes. But uh, this is from Izzy Miyake's Cotton Label. And this is by far the softest cotton I've ever felt in my whole life. Never felt anything like this. It's like a combed cotton, but even softer than that. I mean, Izzy Miyake is one of the most innovative, smartest designers, I think, of our time, of history. Um, I don't think he doesn't get talked about as much as he should. Even in, like, my history classes I took in college, I feel like he was super slept on. I mean, the origami pieces he's made, the pleating that he's done, he's a truly innovative designer. And this is by far one of my favorite pieces. Extremely, extremely soft. The color is kind of what sold me. Uh, I got this on eBay probably a year or so ago at a free size gambled on. I think I only got it for like 40 bucks, so it was worth the risk for me. And there's always that risk and reward factor. If I get it, it fits great. If it doesn't, I just sell it. And it's okay, because I get to see it. It's a piece of history, so. Busy Miyake Cotton. Um, let's do this piece. I'm gonna do this piece, even though it doesn't really fit me very well. Uh, this was actually pretty recent, probably a couple months ago. The first undercover piece I ever found that I felt, hey, you know what, maybe this will fit me. I'm not positive, but let's give it a shot. It's a size large, but he had the pit to pit as a 23 inches across the chest 
which is my absolute minimum. I can't go any lower than 23, but I'd never even seen Undercover, except for one piece. It had like, I can't remember the name of the band, but it was all over print shirt. It was on Grailed. I think actually I saw it in Shane Gonzalez archive on Instagram, but um, it's a little bit too small. I could probably wear it with a jacket, but if I don't, the shapes come out, so can't do that. But it's got basically a, I'm feeling like a cowboy, got lit on fire, riding this blue horse into hell. Got the undercover, undercover is in for Rebels on the tag, and the undercover is on the back. I just love the design that Jin does. I wish that he would make shit in bigger sizes. You know, like this is another brand like Lad Musician, which is a Japanese brand that I wish would ship here because they actually do that. They have their small line because that's just what Japanese designers do. And then they make a big line. So, Jin, if you're listening, make a big line, please, for people like me. Um... I'll show this as well. Uh, I picked this up, I think last sale essence continuing, but uh, it's Acne Studios long sweater. Uh, extremely comfortable, extremely soft. Another oversized piece, this is a medium, so those measurements at essence came in hand. Just really, really simple design. A little bit longer than I would like it to be, but it's acne and it's hard to find acne in a bigger size. Pretty much their sweaters are what they make big, or t-shirts fit small as fuck, but. Another one of my favorite pieces. The cotton's really soft, and I love this piece. Probably never get rid of this piece. So, Acne Studios. The last piece I'm going to show this is actually another kind of recent. Are these Margella boots? Margella boots are pretty much all I wear. So I'm not I'm not a big sneaker guy. I used to be huge into Jordans, all that stuff, skating shoes. Even though I could never skateboard. But Margiela boots are by far my favorite shoes. I've owned like five pairs over the course of my life. I don't think, other than I have a pair of Andamula Mews, I own any shoes that aren't Margiela, unless I'm like working out. But I got these on eBay, I think for like 90 bucks. Fucking steals, I know, it's it's crazy. But these are metallic, metallic silver, really beat up, kind of acidy looking. These are by far my favorite boots. I wear these very often, unless I'm wearing my black Margiela boots, which is what I wear almost every day. But another one of my, personal grail pieces that I'll probably never get rid of, so. Um, I think that's just about it for like the main pieces I wanted to show. Just wanted to give you guys an idea of the stuff I'm, gonna, I'm into, stuff I might be showing in the future. But to me, it's not always about, for me at least, I don't always buy clothes knowing that, hey, it's gonna fit me. I buy clothes, I take the risk, hoping it will. If it doesn't, to me, I'm a collector. I like to see the pieces. I like to feel them in my hand. And there's always a resale value market, so. I might go through some stuff pretty quick, but that's just because I, I, I like to collect. I like to sell, I like to trade, I like to do all of that. So um, that's pretty much it for this video. So first video on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. See you guys again soon.